Hello everyone, it is Kim from Tabletop Gaming Guild and I am so excited to bring you another review today. Today's game is called Chronicles of Crime. This is a one to four player game by Lucky Duck Games and it is rated 12 and up and the suggested playing time is between 60 and 90 minutes. I am so excited to show you this game, so let's get down to the tabletop and check it out. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and take a look at Chronicles of Crime. So when you open up your game board, oh, excuse me, I'm only playing one player today, ma'am. When you open up your game board, you will see all of these different places with the uh, magnifying glass. Those are where you'll keep track of your clues. Over here on the side, these are going to be the different location slots. Down here a little bit lower, these are going to be the place uh, where you put your characters as you unlock them. And in case you forget any of that, it's all available right here for you in the instructions. The instructions are very simple. You know how I feel about short instruction books. That's all there is to it. The other thing that you will need is you will need to download the Chronicles of Crime app on your phone. And when you're ready to play, you are able to take a look at all of these different options here. Now, the one that we are using is the London Forensic. And if you would like to play through the tutorial, that's probably the best way to get yourself incorporated, uh, like, into how the game itself works. So you want to definitely allow those things. And you essentially just follow through the tutorial itself. It's going to tell you what cards you need to pull out. So you will have, for example, your deck of people. You don't want to look through these ahead of time. But for the purposes of introducing you to the game, we'll take a look at card 33, which this is the detective that you're going to be working with. And all of the different cards are going to have these QR scanner codes. And that is part of the app itself. And then your instructions show up and you essentially just keep following the instructions. So for example, in this one, we're going to go and see this old woman who has been found dead. And it's up to us to determine if it was a homicide or if it was uh, a natural death. So we follow the instructions and the tutorial is literally going to walk you through how to play the game. Excuse me. So you just keep following the instructions. It will tell you when you need various things, like for example, the location card that we're going to need to start us off is letter G. To go to that location, we're going to scan the barcode. Anytime you want to exit out of talking to a certain person, you're going to click on goodbye. So once you get a location, you're going to put it to the side of the board. I mean, it's kind of up to you where you choose to put the location itself. Um, 
There is the recommendation that you start down here as well. And you keep all of your people straight as you go. Uh, but certain ones I don't like to put down here simply because of the way the cards themselves are. So see, for example, the location card for Scotland Yard fits down here better because down here, underneath, just the way that the cards are themselves. You know, these are little places for your cards, okay? So, we're going to go to the victim's home. We're going to follow the various actions. You'll notice there's a timer up here. That's going to play into your final score at the end. Alrighty. So, once you're ready to search the scene itself, there's the option that if you want to use some sort of like VR device, but I do not use that. All right, so it's gonna count down and the idea is, is that we're to look around the room and see what it is we see. You're kind of looking for anything that matches up with information on these evidence cards. You can always look at these. So for example, there is furniture in here. I probably want to look for furniture. As I'm looking through, as I'm spinning, oh, there's our victim. I see food. I see pets. I'm going to want to keep looking though, because as you can see, after so long, you are counted down. So now I can look back through. I think I also saw some games over there and animals. So let's say that those are the things that I was able to find here. Remember that this is a multiplayer game. So if you want somebody else to have a look at it, you can also look at yourself again if you would like to. But now it's up to you to take a look and scan the various cards. So I'm going to start with food. And here's my next clue. According to what the app is telling me, I should go and speak to the scientist. Now who's that you may be wondering? Well, let me lay out my clues here. There are various people who can help you solve this crime. So we have a scientist. We have a hacker, we have a doctor, and we have a criminologist. All of them, whenever the, t whenever the app prompts you, you can scan their QR code and get more information from them. And essentially, this is how the game is continued. So let's go ahead and scan the scientist so you can see how that works. And now I'm able to speak to the scientist. They want to know if I have any clues for them. So I show them, oops, not goodbye, that I have this clue here. Now, Lu Chin is telling me that there is something inside the cake that if this old lady ate it, probably would have made her sick. It's going to correspond with this star card number four, which I've already taken out because I did play this game before. So we're going to remove that and essentially just continue through with the cards, following the directions, looking at the different opportunities, scanning as needed. There she is. She was lost in the other deck. All right, there's our number four. So now that I have this one, I'm gonna follow the directions. And this now becomes a clue. And I want to learn more about it. And I would continue through the other clues. And if I felt like I was hitting some sort of a block and didn't really have an idea of what to do next, I would go back and I would look at the scene again. 
eventually your goal through the app is to solve the crime. And once you get through there, I don't want to go through the whole thing because I do want to allow you to be able to play that. Once you go through the whole thing, you do get a score of how well you did. And the tutorial itself probably will take you 20 minutes and then you'll be able to play one of the full size games. So let me bring you back up from the tabletop and talk to you about my final thoughts. So my final thoughts on this game, uh, I am in love with this game. I have been looking for a game that is centered around crime, that is actually you solving the crime. You have to use your wits, your own knowledge base. You have to put the clues together. This isn't a card game where you end up saying, oh, I played the cards in the right order, I solved the crime. This is a legit crime solving game. And I have been on the lookout for this for years. So this game is going to get my highest recommendation. I will say I don't think I would like to play with more people. <laughs> I do think that um, I would personally, I would only want to play this with myself. I could see myself getting annoyed with other people um, who want to look at cards or, or just have different ideas of how to solve the crime, uh, which is probably why I'm not a criminal investigator. <laughs> so with that being said, if you like mysteries, if you like solving mysteries, if you are tired of all the games that make it sound like there's some sort of mystery happening that you have to solve, but that's really not what's happening at all, this is the game for you. Alrighty? Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you watching my videos. If you would please like the video, subscribe if you haven't yet, and make sure that you come back for our next review. Have a great night, everybody, and I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.